break. Hurry, Mr. Bergeron's on. Don't forget the popcorn, Frank. Coming, dear. Federal government pays them the extra, the Federal Housing Administration. So all of these reverse mortgages are federally insured. Because of that, they're also very heavily federally regulated. And the regulations are all the same across all of these reverse mortgage companies. So uh, this is not an unusual figure that to borrow with a reverse mortgage with an available amount of $245,000, your cost would be about $16,500. Suppose that Frank and Mary did looked at the kinds of home modifications that we were just talking to and maybe some larger ones. Maybe they were doing a ramp. Maybe they were doing some adaptations to their kitchen. And those modifications added up to a total cost of $40,000. So in that case, the closing cost would have been $16,500. The home modifications, forty. dollars They would have left about $189,000. Excuse me. Yes, they would have left about $189,000. Um, to spend as a reserve in case they needed it for something else. If Frank and Mary were 80 years old, that reserve would be $214,000. Once again, you have more available to you the older, that, the older that you are. So I'm not saying that this is a great idea um, and should be avoided in, in, you know, unless you need to do it, but for people who have, are on fixed incomes and have very little in savings and really want to stay in their house, you really ought to look at this. Second possibility. A reverse mortgage where the lender is the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. Now, I, I know you probably find that hard to believe, but this is actually an existing program. It's called the Home Modification Loan Program. If you have a spouse or you have a disability and you are doing modifications to your home that will allow you to stay at home, then the Commonwealth of Massachusetts will lend you up to $30,000 through several regional entities that provide this kind of funding. If I recall correctly here, the funding is provided by something called the South Middlesex Opportunity Council. Amazingly enough, an entity that exists in my neck of the woods in central Massachusetts. The deal is you can borrow up to $30,000 as long as your, your income is no, is no higher than 200% of the HUD median income. What is that? Um, if you're Frank and Mary, for a family of two, the median income is $75,600. Two times that is $151,200. If, if you are below 100% of median income, then on this reverse mortgage, it's no interest. All the payments are deferred. The payment, like the payment in a reverse mortgage, is only owed if you move out of the house or if you die. And if you already have a reverse mortgage on your house that you maybe got earlier or you got it for a bigger amount or whatever, you can get this anyway. And they'll put a reverse mortgage on, a reverse second mortgage on, just to help you fix up your house. So it's a program that is really important if you're Frank and Mary and you're concerned about what kind of resources are available to you and you want to fix up your house. So what else should Frank and Mary be doing at this point? If Mary has early stage Alzheimer's, once again, those are their assets, there's their income. Oftentimes, I deal with folks who, Frank or Mary, oftentimes Frank, if Mary is in early stages, comes to talk to me and says, oh my God, you know, Mary's got Alzheimer's and we're gonna get wiped out here. Well, the good news is that that is, that that is not the case. First, as we were just talking about, for the programs that are available through Elder Services of Cape Cod and the Islands, if Mary has early stage Alzheimer's, don't have any asset limitations at all. There are some income limitations, there may be some co-pays, but no asset limitations. If Mary's dementia progresses and she needs to qualify for more home care, there is a special program called the Frail Elder Waiver, which is paid through MassHealth. That program does have asset limits. However, the asset limit is for the person who is trying to qualify for MassHealth, $2,000. But there is no asset limit for the spouse. No asset limit for the spouse. So in Frank and Mary's case, if, if Mary want, needed to qualify for this program, and if you qualify for the program, um, and you qualify if medically, Elder Services of Cape Cod and the Islands thinks that you need assistance, regular assistance, with two of the activities of daily living, and they are 
uh, uh, dressing, eating, bathing, toileting, and transferring. Getting up out of a chair, walking across the room, sitting down, that's transferring. If you need help with two of those, then they can, they can qualify you for whatever number of hours Elder Services thinks you need in order to stay at home. And whatever that number of hours is, MassHealth will pay that number of hours to have home care provided for you at home, right? Um, and for, to qualify for that program, Mary has to have less than $2,000 in countable assets, but Frank can have unlimited assets. So Mary can literally, the day before she goes to apply, transfer the house and the other assets to Frank, and then she can qualify. What if her situation gets worse and she ends up needing to go to the island home or go off island? But nobody goes off island. Everybody seems to go to the island home. So what if she needs to go to the island home? In that case, she can still transfer all of those assets to Frank. Frank can still own the house. It's not a countable asset. Frank can have as much as $117,240 in other assets, cash or cash equivalent assets, and Frank can have unlimited income. Therefore, going back to the Frank and Mary example, you shift the house to Frank, Frank and Mary had $400,000 in other assets, which you shift all to Frank. Frank needs to basically buy an annuity. An annuity is an income stream. Income, and Frank can have un unlimited income, even if Mary is in the nursing home. So Frank can take the money that is over $117,240, buy himself an annuity, as long as that annuity calls for regular monthly payments over a term that is shorter than his actuarial life expectancy, which if he's 70 is about 14 years, <clears throat> as long as that annuity has those terms to it, Frank can buy the annuity and Mary can qualify for mass health at the island home the next day. So if Frank and Mary, or if you have a loved one that you're concerned about and these early dementia symptoms are showing, you don't have to go transfer all your assets to a third party and wait five years, none of that is the case. You can stay home, you can stay safe, knowing that as these programs are necessary, they're gonna be available for, them, for you. The only things that you would wanna do in that case, if you're frank, is you'd wanna make sure that if you died and Mary needed help, either at home or in a nursing home, that those assets remain safe. So you'd wanna make sure that instead of leaving things to Mary when you die, that instead, you leave everything in trust, naming Peter Paul or Mary Jr. as the trustees for the benefit of Mary. If Frank does that and all the assets are in his name when he dies, they will all be safe from Mary's benefit. The other things that you're really going to want to do, you wanna, you're going to want to do a power of attorney. If you're Frank and Mary, if Mary is having early stage, early stage dementia, you want to make sure that Mary has empowered, her, has empowered somebody else and Frank has empowered somebody else to transfer assets on their behalf in case they get sick or in, in case things need to be done. So that in the situations that I've given you, if assets need to be transferred from Mary, there is somebody that can transfer things on her behalf. She doesn't have to be capable of actually signing those documents. Once again, we talked about early asset shifting. There's really no reason for that uh, in the Frank and Mary case unless if Frank and Mary, if Frank was really worried about Mary, Mary is showing early stages of dementia, Frank is still in good health. If he says, but, it, but it, suppose he has a history of heart attack, suppose there's a history in the family. If he's concerned about the fact that he might just die at some point with, for, quickly before assets could be shifted to him, in that case, they may want to, they may want to actually shift their assets to Frank early. So a brief summary. If Mary has early stage Alzheimer's, there are a set of things that Frank wants to do. He wants to contact the Alzheimer's Association to find out, to get a diagnosis, to figure out what's going on. He wants to contact Elder Services of Cape Cod and the Islands to find out what current programs are available to him. Um, he wants to look around at his house to make sure that it is still safe for Mary to live there and that it's gonna stay safe for her to live there so that she doesn't inadvertently fall, break a hip, and you kind of know where that goes. That's just all bad. Um, to the extent that he's, Frank is concerned about paying for the re improvements to the house, he can consider a reverse mortgage from a regular reverse mortgage company or through the special program that is offered in Massachusetts. And they may want to look at some asset planning knowing that they do not have to divest themselves of everything and wait five years. 
that they can stay at their home and they can stay safe. Uh, the goal of all of this is to sleep well at night. So if this is irrelevant to you, then, then you, know, you don't have to worry about it. If any of this is relevant, then you may wanna follow up, especially if you are interested in these Alzheimer's issues, contact the Alzheimer's Association. I cannot emphasize that enough. There are so many resources that they can give you or, or look at their website so that you can see it online and get a sense of what is available. And talk to Sherry Hunt. Thank you very much. And if you want to see this show again or any of the presentations that I've done, this is my YouTube channel. Actually, this is Frank and Mary's YouTube channel, but they let me get on it. Thank you very much.